Hello, how are you guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, this is part two of the Australian culture shock. Now, if you have not watched part one, I will leave um, a link in the des description of this video and then you can click on it and you can watch it if you have not been able to watch it. Now, today we continue with part two. Now, without wasting much time, let's get into it. Number one, the post office services, the poster, that is. Uh, there's a lot of poster, you know, being done in Australia compared to Kenya, where I came from. Actually, there was no much, you know, letters, you know, the physical letters. In Kenya, everything has like transitioned to email. Everything you do, you are being sent email. And there was no much, you know, um, letters being sent, the physical, the hard copies. I landed in Australia where every house has a letterbox. You know, at the front there, every house, there's a letterbox. So all the letters are delivered there. So you, you don't need to go to a central post office, you know, like the way in Kenya you have a key and a slot in the in the post office where you can go and check your letters. Here everything is delivered at your doorstep. And if something is sensitive, they will just knock at your door and they will give you. If you are not there, they will take you to the nearest uh, post office for you to go and collect. So that was a huge, a huge, you know, a shock for me because I was not used to those, you know, hard copy letters. And uh, you come here, you know, you have, you know, letters, letters stacked up for everything you do. You just receive a letter. So that was quite different from uh, where I came from. Number two, uh, the police, the, tra the traffic police. In Kenya, I was used to almost every spot, every, you know, um, traffic light. There are police standing in there, you know, moving, you know, stopping, letting cars go. When I landed in Australia, the first few days, I was looking for the traffic police and I couldn't, you know, find any. Uh, Andila had to ask, where are the traffic police in this country? Because I could not see any on the roads uh, only to find that everything is fully fully uh, controlled using traffic lights and you can't see any 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 police near any traffic light so people here obey lights a lot a lot a lot there's a lot of uh order on the roads uh, even if you are alone on the road and, you know, the, the light turns red on you and there's no other cars, you can even, you know, stay there for up to two minutes waiting for your turn to go. And remember, you are alone. So people obey lights, so there's no need for uh, traffic police to do anything. So that, that, that was really a, a big shock, you know. For me because i was used every junction a police apples whether they are red or green you could be passing when they are red you could be you know because it's police who is controlling all those stuff number three christmas celebration this country knows how to celebrate for christmas and what really uh shocked me is as early as mid October, people had started putting up Christmas lights, you know, in their houses, and um, others putting up uh, Christmas trees. And I was like, "This is too early," but that's how it is. People start celebrating Christmas very, very early. The same thing they start, you know, doing the shopping for Christmas as early as you know by the end of November. Most of the people have like you know shopped budgeted whatever they need for christmas so when it is christmas time it's like every home has christmas lights so you walk around and everything is you know looking so nice there's that mood and the spirit of christmas 
So Christmas is, there's a lot of celebration for Christmas here in Australia. Number, number four, how Australia has friendly people. You know, people are willing to help. And if you, you are in trouble, people are willing to ask you, are you okay? Do you need some help? So I found that quite, you know, very good. Yeah, people are willing to, you know, to, to extend that willingness to, to help so long as you are, you are not, you know, you seem not okay. They are very okay to assist you. And that is something very, very um, okay and very good when it comes to um, Australian people. The other thing is uh, the life work balance. In Australia, uh, they really value life work balance. So, if you are stressed or maybe you are going through challenges, uh, they will try to encourage you to take time off from work and then you try to, you know, uh, you know, get back to yourself. And uh, they will not force you to work so long as you are not. You know, you are not emotionally or physically, you are not well. So there is a lot of life work balance. And uh, people will always attend activities of their interest. And that is something very okay. Uh, even at workplace, when you're getting like, you know, day off to attend a certain function, people respect that. So they respect you attending things that, you know, um, make you happy in life. Number six, and this is more related to, you know, more to, to school and the students, something which uh, I found different from what I was used to. Uh, it's, uh, you know, students outshining their, their teachers or their lecturers. So here it's very common for students to, you know, to, to, to correct a teacher or a lecturer so if he makes a mistake, you know, he'll be like, no, I don't think that is correct. I think, you know, this is how it needs to be done. And then teachers or lecturers, they really appreciate that and they encourage that. And, you know, if a student, you know, um, tries to uh, point out a mistake maybe done by the teacher, they'll be like, oh, that's that's very nice of you. Thanks for pointing that one out. And they encourage that. They are happy when you challenge them. From my country, you challenge a teacher, hey, you, you, possibly you're going to fail. And even if you are right, they still going to like, not all of them, but some might still fake it. But yeah, you're still wrong. And it's something they don't like to encourage because you seem to, to know more than a teacher. While here yeah, it's very different, you know, uh, teachers will love you for that. They will be like, oh, that's very nice of you. Thank you so much. And they will really appreciate. So that was not something I was used to. Number seven and the last one is people here love walking barefoot. You see people, you know, uh, in uh, shopping malls and they are walking without shoes and uh, I think they love it. So, it's, and out walking without shoes. It's common. It's very, very, very common. And um, you see them, you know, you are in a hall and, uh, you know, people have just taken off their shoes and they are just on barefoot. And I was not used to handouts, you know, grown-ups walking without shoes. And so that's, that's common here. That's really common. So... Thank you so much, guys, for listening to this video. Um, I would like you to do me a favor. If you love this video, please uh, give it a thumbs up. Uh, make sure you share with your friends. And also, if you have not subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. You know, when you subscribe and when you share and you like the video, YouTube tries to, you know, uh, promote it and uh, share with as many people as possible. And that's how you you'll get my video to reach as many people as possible. And that's how you will help this channel to grow. And you know what? Subscribing, liking and all that, it's absolutely free. You don't need to pay anything. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for your support. I will see you again in my next video. Take care.
拜。